Scott Stephen has been searching the company records for information about John Malcolm's time at Gloucester House. This is what Gloucester House would have looked like. Is that still there now to see? No, I'm afraid that's long gone. But we do have the Gloucester House journals. Oh, really? Which I've, I've made some, some transcriptions of some of the entries here. Thank you. Uh, November the 16th, the men employed taken up nets that were set fast in the ice. Got five fish. Five, that's not going to be enough. Um, for how many men? Ten men. Ten men. November the 17th, Richard Thomas making snowshoe frames. John Malcolm cutting firewood. Six fish from the nets. God. So that's five fish one day and six the next. November the 23rd, finding it now impossible to maintain the number of men that is here, being unable to procure so many fish per day as would scarcely serve two. I have given five men orders to prepare to set off on Tuesday for Albany. Uh, Magnus Bucky, Samuel Harvey, John Goody, John Johnston and John Malcolm. So how long has he been there and he's gone again? He's been there a month. About a month and a half. A month and a half. And he's got to go again. Back to Albany. And this time, the river is freezing up, so they're going to have to go overland on foot with snowshoes and sleds. They're undernourished. It's going to be very, very difficult for them. On the 25th of November, John set off from Gloucester House on the 350-mile trip back to Albany with four other men. God, he's having it tough, isn't he? There better be a happy ending here, Scott. Wow. December the 11th. Late at night, an Indian arrived with a few skins and informed me he'd fallen in with the track of someone walking without snowshoes. That he followed it for some time and at length came up with a white man. He states the man to be in a miserable condition, having much froze his feet, and from the description he gives of him, I conjecture it to be John Malcolm. So he's lost his way, so they didn't stick together then? Apparently not. And Why wouldn't you stick together? Unfortunately, the documents don't tell us that. Maybe visibility's bad. He just lost his way and was yeah. at the end of the group and he hadn't realised he'd gone. Maybe. It must have been terrifying to be all alone in such an environment, especially if, you know, you've been in a group and then all of a sudden everybody's gone and how scary that must have been. When I had the snowshoes on, I lost one, and if I had been on my own, it's too scary to think what could have happened. Poor John. Thank God for the Indian. John's saviour there. John was found all alone, almost three weeks after he had set off for Albany, and was brought back to Gloucester House. It was the middle of winter when temperatures often fall as low as minus 40 degrees. I'm really curious as to what happens next. I just I hope something good happens. Let's take a look here. Thank you. December the 15th, John Malcolm in a shocking condition. And at present, there appears no likelihood of his ever recovering. Wow. Uh, January the 19th, John Malcolm's still much the same. He's hanging on in there, isn't he? He's a tough one. He is. Can I have a look and see how, how long ago that was? That was uh, December? Yeah. He's hanging on in there. Over a month. I mean, no improvement, but he's still there. Mm-hmm. Now, unfortunately, that's all that the mm. Gloucester House journals tell us. But I've found a letter from... William Thomas, the gentleman in charge of Gloucester House, written to his superior later on in, in 1818. John Malcolm is now laying here in a miserable condition, having froze his feet in so dreadful a manner that since I have been obliged to cut both off. Um, wow. It's horrendous that he's had his feet taken off. The, the frostbite has caused uh, major, major damage to the, to the nerve endings. But 
he's still alive. It, it must have been to give him a better chance of survival, so he must have been... He's clearly fighting. Yes. Because the rest of his health must have been more at risk with the feet on. Right. William Thomas was the gentleman in charge of the post, and so he was in charge of cutting off John's feet. Sarah's now turning her attention to her ancestors on her father's side. My dad thinks uh, that there are Scottish roots. In Canada. In 1817, it took John Malcolm three months by ship. 